Hi, welcome to my channel, Math Made Easy with Laurel. I'm Laurel, and in this video, we're going to talk about the trigonometric functions. I have drawn a right triangle here. So understand that these trig functions only work with right triangles. And I've labeled this angle theta. It's a typical Greek symbol that we often use to represent angles. So just like we often use X in algebra, just accept that it's a symbol for an angle. The trig functions are simply ratios of sides in this right triangle. The names of the trig functions are sine, which we're going to just use SIN. Cosine, we'll just use the symbol COS. And tangent, we'll just use the abbreviation TAN. To start with, I want to define the sides of this right triangle. And I'm going to give them names in relation to this angle theta. First of all, the side across or opposite the right angle is always called the hypotenuse, and it's always the longest side. Then we have two other sides. One's going to be adjacent to the angle, one's opposite the angle. So if we take a look, this side here is adjacent to the angle, so we call this the adjacent side. And this side here is opposite the angle, so we call it opposite. If we were working with this angle, those would be reversed. So it's always in relation to the angle that you're working with. The definition of the trig functions are simply ratios of sides. Our first trig function is the sine function, and it's always defined as the ratio of the side opposite the angle to the hypotenuse. So it would be opposite, which I'll just abbreviate, to hypotenuse. That ratio of those two sides in a right triangle is called the sine of the angle. Then we have the cosine function. So the cosine of our angle is always defined as the ratio of the side adjacent to the angle to the hypotenuse. So I'm going to write that as adjacent over hypotenuse. And the third trig function is tangent. Tangent is defined as the ratio of the opposite side to the adjacent side. One way that students often remember these definitions is with the saying Sokotoa. You may remember hearing it. What that's saying is that sine is equivalent to opposite divided by hypotenuse. Cosine is equivalent to the ratio of adjacent over hypotenuse. And tangent is equal to the side opposite divided by the adjacent side. So that might help you remember these definitions. Our calculators can find all of these trig functions for any angle. So for example, if we punched in sine of 30 degrees, we should get 0 0.5. What that means is in any right triangle, where you have a 30 degree angle, it can be large, it can be small, it doesn't matter. The ratio of the opposite side to the hypotenuse will always be 0.5. So knowing these trig functions, we are going to be able to find an unknown side if we know one side and the angle. Let's take a look at some examples. In my first example, my angle is 30 degrees. The hypotenuse is eight inches. And we want to find this side. So our triangles are not always going to be positioned in this manner. So you always want to get in the habit of defining your sides in relation to this angle. So this is either the adjacent side or the opposite side. So we can see it's across, so it is the opposite. We're not being asked to find the adjacent side, so we don't worry about the trig functions that use the adjacent side. The only trig function that uses opposite the hypotenuse is the sine function. So that's the one we're going to use. The sine of our angle will be equal to the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. And we plug in the values that we know. We know the angle is 30 degrees. The opposite side we don't know, so we can call it x. The hypotenuse is 8 inches. Two ways we can solve this. One is to actually calculate the sine of 30 degrees and then continue on. What I like to do is just get my variable by itself and then just plug everything into my calculator all at once. In order to isolate x, I need to get rid of this 
8 that's being divided into x. So the opposite of division is multiplication. So if I multiply by 8, that's going to cancel and I'll get rid of it. But remember with an equation, whatever you do to one side, you have to do the same thing to the other side. So I multiply this side by 8, I need to multiply this side by 8. When I do that, I am going to get x by itself. The 8's cancel. So now I'm going to plug this into my calculator. 8 times the sine of 30 degrees. If you're using a Texas Instrument XA30, then you are going to put in your angle first, 30 degrees, then you're going to take the sine, and then you're going to multiply by 8. Some of you with other calculators can type it in exactly as you see it, 8 times the sine of 30 degrees. When you do the calculation, you should get x equal to 4 inches. So that means this side is 4 inches long. Didn't ask for this side, so we don't worry about it. Let's do another example. In this triangle, we know this angle, we know this side, and we're asked to find this side. So let's name, we don't care about the hypotenuse, so we're not going to worry about that. Let's name these two sides in relation to this angle. So the side across or opposite 20 degrees would be this side. So this is the opposite side. And then the side adjacent to the angle is this side. We're not going to worry about the hypotenuse. So then we decide what trig function uses the side opposite and the side adjacent. That would be the tangent function. So we know that the tangent of our angle will be the, defined as the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. So we plug in what we know. We know the angle is 20 degrees. The opposite side is 15. The adjacent side, we don't know, we're going to call that x. In order to solve this, I'm, I want to get x by itself. I need to get it out of the denominator. So I'm going to multiply both sides by x. So it will cancel here, and I'll have x times the tangent of 20 degrees equals 15. And I want to get x by itself, so I'm going to divide both sides by the tangent of 20 degrees. So x will equal 15 divided by the tangent of 20 degrees. Again, you could find the tangent of 20 and then continue on in solving. I just find it awkward sometimes because you're, off, you're often working with an awkward decimal value. When you do the calculation, 15 divided by the tangent of 20 degrees, you should get 41.2 centimeters. So try that with your calculator and make sure that you're able to get that value. Let's do some more examples. In our next example, we're given this angle is 42 degrees. This side is 10 centimeters, and we want to find this side. So first of all, define your sides in terms of this angle. This side is opposite the right angle, so this is the hypotenuse. This side is adjacent to the angle we're working with, so this is the adjacent side. This side would be opposite, but we don't know it, and we don't want to know it, so we're going to leave it out. So we're looking for the trig function that uses adjacent and hypotenuse, and that would be cos. Cos of theta will be equal to the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. Plug in what we know, 42 degrees. The adjacent side is 10, and the hypotenuse, we're not sure, we'll call that x. From this point, if you know how to isolate x without going through the steps that I'm going to go through, that's fine, but I'm going to go step by step so I don't lose anybody. First of all, I can't solve for x when it's in the denominator, so I'm going to multiply both sides by x. When I do that, it cancels on this side. So now I've got x times the cos of 42 degrees equals 10. I want to get x by itself, so I'm going to divide both sides by cos of 42 degrees. I'm dividing this side by it so that it will cancel, but whatever I do to one side of the equation, I have to do to the other side. So x will equal 10 divided by the cos of 42 degrees. When you do the calculation, you should get 13.5 centimeters. I want to do one last example, and this is actually going to be a sine bar example. Uh, if you have a 5 inch sine bar, and you want to create an angle of 12.5 degrees, you will be required to find the gauge block set needed here to get that particular angle. So let's take a look at how we can solve for this side. First of all, let's define our sides. 
The five inch side is across from the right angle, so this is hypotenuse. This side is across from our angle, so that's opposite. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse. And that's actually why it's called a sine bar, because you're always going to know the length of the sine bar, and then you're going to be finding the height or that gauge block set. So let's plug in what we know. Our angle is 12.5 degrees. The opposite side we don't know, we'll call that x. The hypotenuse is 5 inches. So in order to isolate x, we need to get rid of this 5 that's being divided into x. So we do that by multiplying by 5. Whatever we do to one side, we do to the other side. 5 cancels here, so we've got x equals 5 times the sine of 12.5 degrees. We get an answer of 1.0822 inches, and I'm going to four decimal places because that's standard when you're finding your gauge block set. This is just one example of the many applications of the trig functions in the trades, and I'm going to do the next video on more of those applications. Then the video after that, I'm going to be taking a look at using the trig functions to find the angle when we know two sides. Take care, and we'll see you on the next video.